High School is not like High School Musical. It's not like the movies. It's not like no TV show. Like, it's real life. <laughs> my channel or if you're new welcome to my channel i'm jamiah and in today's video i'm going to be giving you guys some real life experience real life tips on how to survive high school this goes for all you freshmen to the seniors i know you guys that are seniors are like i already been through all this but let me tell you i learned most of my stuff when i was in senior year i'll just be giving you guys some tips and some advice on how i survived high school i graduated last year you might as well say because the school year already started for some people i'm class of 2019 so without further ado if you guys are new please subscribe to my channel and let's just go ahead and get into this okay, so i have my notes i'm just gonna go ahead and start with the first tip okay so my first tip is to be yourself i know this is kind of cliche and like a lot of people says this but it's really like the honest god truth is to be yourself you can't try to just come around here walking into high school and either being scared or nervous of what people interpret you. Half of them you went to school with in middle school, so they probably already know how you are. And the other half of them really don't even know you. It's best for you to just go in there being yourself. I learned that literally like my senior year. I, I was never the type to just sit around and just act like someone else, but I would never be my actual self. Or I would just always be in my little box and not really communicate with other people. I just didn't really want to just go out there especially because i moved to a different school so it was like i was with a whole another group of people that i didn't even go to school with in elementary or middle school so i just really stayed myself but i guarantee you when you're yourself people will actually love you for you and people actually want to be around you for you instead of about you just trying to act like someone else and when you get to high school it's gonna be a whole like huge change like ain't nobody no kid no more have the people that want to be grown and like to smoke and like to drink and you know be up on your boys vice versa if you're not ready for all that you don't have to do that like honestly it's not even good to smoke or drink at a young age just be yourself you don't have to be like everybody else in order for you to be a quote-unquote cool kid you don't have to smoke you don't have to drink you don't have to party another thing on that when you are yourself you basically show how you are as a person you don't have to be the type of person to be into the cliques and stuff like that I never was. I just hung with like my three friends. Even when I moved schools, my 11th grade year, I really didn't hang with pe the people there. I talked to certain people, but I wasn't really like the type of person being the clique. The clique at my other school that I went to for the last two years, it was kind of like crazy because sometimes they would be friends with each other and sometimes they wouldn't. So it was like, you never knew who to be friends with. So I would really just stay to myself all day. Like I'm cordial to everybody like that's just how i am i wasn't the type to be like oh i'm on this side and the next minute oh i'm with these these group of people like that's just unnecessary just be yourself sis like you can hang by yourself it's okay like, i just hung with my three friends all four years it's just better to be yourself all around like you don't have to be in any type of cliques you don't have to smoke drink all that to be considered a cool kid you can hang by yourself like there's nothing wrong with that because I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, if something goes down, something happens, your quote-unquote friends are not going to be there for you. you going to have to have your own back. So it's better to just be yourself and just have your own back. Tip number two, your GPA matters. Right when you walk in the door, your first day of high school to your last day of high school, your GPA matters. Like, period. When you first walk into high school, you have to be all about your business. Like you can have fun, you can talk to your friends, you can give it to your boyfriend, you can do whatever you want to do, but just please keep your GPA up. As soon as you drop your GPA, it's hard as freak to get it back up. People don't really tell you this or teachers don't tell you this, that your GPA matters. As soon as you walk in the door, you should be all about your business. Like you should not be ready to just play around, be loud. Oh yeah, and don't be one of the loud kids in the hallway. Like that's just, that's annoying. But anyways, you should be all about your business. Like, you shouldn't be ready to just see what that person over there is doing. You shouldn't be ready to find your next boo, you know, all that. Be about your business and be about your grades. Because when I tell you that GPA drops, it's hard to get it back up. You should always study. I was the type of person for the longest, like, I really didn't have to study. If I paid attention in class, look over my stuff a few times, then I was straight, but like I wasn't the type of person to study every night for hours and hours or even just miss, you know, going out with my friends to study. Like I never did that. But my last two years, 
I definitely had to start doing that. Even though I wasn't the best person to study, but it's best for you to study and it's best for you to pay attention in class because that's basically the main thing that helps you with your GPA. Other thing, along with studying and paying attention in class, do your homework. Like, doing your homework is like the easiest thing you can do. Some teachers don't even check if it's if your answer is right or wrong. They just check to see if you did it. Most of my teachers did that. Like, they didn't even check to see if the answer was right. They're just like, oh, you did it, up oh, 100. That's an easy grade for you. Do the daily work. Daily work adds up. Like, some teachers will give you like a hall pass or a bathroom pass or something. I know my teachers gave me bathroom passes all the time. And if you never even used it, hey, here's, I'll drop your lowest test grade. Here's 10 points added onto your lowest test score. Stuff like that, like that helps you boost your grade up. Try to do extra credit, stay after school for tutoring, like just be on top of your stuff in class. And at the end, if you slacking off a little bit, you need him to boost those little points just to round you up to a 70. Or if you need to boost it up to an A and you wanna be like an A student or something like that, they'll think back to when you did that in class, you came to tutoring, you was always paying attention in class, you was answering questions, doing your homework. They always remember that, like I promise you, they always do. It worked for me all the time, like, the bathroom passes and just paying attention in class, doing my homework and just honestly focusing and just doing what I gotta do in class always helped out in the end of that semester. Good thing with your GPA, um, if you have a C, don't get too many C's because C's will drop it as well. It's basically the same thing as you get an L. If you're an all A student, don't get C's. If you're an AB student, don't get C's. Like C's are basically like F's to your GPA. If you get a C, it's still gonna be hard to bring it up. That's what really hurt my GPA is when I had a C. Like I had a 79, like that brought my GPA down, like low. I'm an AB on row student and when as soon as I had that C, it dropped it down low because all my grades are high, they're higher. So it's best for you to get all A's or all B's or like be an AB student or get be an all A student, like that's perfect because as soon as you get that C, it's gonna drop. It's basically like an F, like, Honestly, like, don't get a C. So my last thing on the whole GPA thing, some schools don't have AP classes and some people don't have dual enrollment, but where I live, we have dual enrollment and we have AP classes. So first, AP is something you do not wanna do if you don't know how to pass the AP exam. I'm just gonna be honest. I took two AP classes, I dropped out of one of them, and the other one, I made it one on my exam. So it was kind of pointless to take either classes. AP is called advanced placement. It's just basically you taking a college class while you're in high school. Honestly, it's like a normal class. You just learn different and it's a bit more challenging. If you don't think you're gonna pass the AP exam, don't even think about joining no AP class, none of that. Because all you get is a shirt that say you was in one of the AP classes. That's about it. Other than that, you're you're not getting college credit. Like, just for being in the class, all it does is on your transcript, it says, oh, you were in AP statistics. Other than that, them folks ain't studying you unless you pass the AP exam. Dual enrollment, I know some people have this outside of where I live but they call it something different. But basically it's when you leave to like a community college, like here we have like GMC, we have Central Georgia Technical College, that's what we have where I live. And most people just left high school to take classes over there. And basically there, like when you go take classes at the college, you're guaranteed you have college credit. So by the time you get to college, you'll probably be a sophomore or you know, a junior in college instead so of being a freshman in college. My tip to you is to not do AP. AP really does not determine whether you get college credit or not, cause me, I didn't even get any college credit. I took two classes and I still didn't even get college credit. So it was pointless to me being in there, but now I realize it's all over and done with. Dual enrollment is better for any and everybody, I believe, better than AP, because you're guaranteed to get college credit. Half the time, most of the people that I know did dual enrollment, they didn't even have to come to high school. Like they were basically a college student already in the 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. You don't have to take any high school credit because you're getting high school and college credit just by being in dual enrollment. So my suggestion to you, if you're thinking about going ahead and getting a jump start in your life, I suggest you do dual enrollment instead of by doing AP classes because AP is really not a guarantee of you having college credit. Dual enrollment, you definitely gonna have some college credit like on your transcript. So. That's my tips to you on having your GPA and keeping your GPA. This is the major tip. This is the major, major, major tip. It goes for everybody, but majority of the freshmen, because when freshmen walk in, 
they think they all that in a bag of chips. Like, girl, you was 12 years old, sit down somewhere. You freshmen out there, don't date a senior. Like, what? They literally would date the whole football team. Like, don't do that, girl. Like, that's not even cute. You don't want to get a label for yourself. And you just got in high school. Because first of all, you got the rest of your three years. People gonna still remember you from being that girl that always tried to talk to seniors. That always tried to talk to all the football players, all the basketball players, all that. Just chill, chill. You just got in there. Why would you want to date a basically grown man like they're 18 years old you're like 12 13 14 when i was a freshman yeah it was seniors that was cute they're always cute seniors only want one thing from you girl yeah it's fun to go to prom with them go to homecoming with them and just being known as the girl that actually goes with this singer dude but at the end of the day all they want is one thing from you girl and you don't want to give it to them like it's not a good look. Another thing for you guys, not just freshmen, um, girls most importantly, don't sit up here and just date anybody. Like, it's okay to have a boyfriend, it's okay to have a girlfriend, whatever. Don't sit up here and date all these people and then wonder why people talk about you. Don't be the type of person to date. Just come up with a name. If you're going out with Daniel, don't go out with Daniel friend Chris. Then try to talk to Chris friend Leon on the low. Because all three of them going to know. They playing you, girl. You should know that. Like, why would you want to date the friends? Now you're going to be labeled as a groupie. Keep in mind, you're a freshman or you're a sophomore. Even if you're a junior, you still got years after to still have that on your record. People would know you for being that girl that always dates the friends. Or people would know you for being that girl that dates guys and girls. There's no problem with that, but just don't keep on, don't let it keep on being repetitive on yourself. The other thing with the whole dating situation, do not send any nudes like the worst thing you can do. No matter if you've been with that guy for like 10 years or 10 days, do not send him a nude because he can airdrop it to somebody and somebody else can get it. Even the whole school can get it. If you delete it, if it's on Snapchat, the word gets out. As soon as you push send, it's over for you. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you. I'm not trying to be rude or anything. Don't send anything risky that you know you wouldn't send to your parents. Well, you can mess it up for yourself. This is for everybody. But um, basically, mainly for the freshmen, if you're going to high school, you want to be involved. If you're not a sports person, join the band. If you're not a band person, be in the choir. If you're planning on going into military after high school, join the ROTC. It's a lot of stuff you can do in high school. I really didn't join, join stuff until like my last two years. But you get like, at the end of the year, you have chords and stuff with your graduation. You get a lot of chords. You wanna be colorful when you graduate. Like you don't wanna be playing Jane. Be involved, like you never know. You can get scholarships for it, you meet new people, you can get chords at graduation. It's so many benefits as to being involved in high school. It's crazy. If you guys don't like any sports, you don't like band or chorus, join the FBLA team that's all about business. FFA, you know, dealing with animals, plant life, all that type of stuff. FCCLA, cooking, learning how to sew, all that different type of stuff. Like, it's so many things that you can do in high school. You're keeping yourself busy, out of trouble, you know, focusing on the right things, just being involved, you know, in school and stuff like that. Like, you just have so many things. So this is like the most important tip if I haven't said this already. Basically, life after high school. So when you graduate or when you're close to graduating, you're thinking about what you want to do or you should already have in mind of what you want to do. That's just like automatic. Like when you hit 10th grade, go ahead and sign up for like, you know, SAT, ACT. You know, go ahead and start knowing what you want to do after high school because when, as soon as you rock across that stage, you're not going back to another school year of high school. Like, you're just not. You hit 10th grade, even in 9th grade, you should already go ahead and be thinking about what you want to do after high school. Don't wait your 12th grade year to be like, oh, I want to be a doctor. Oh, I want to be this. Oh, I want to be that. Oh, I want to go to the military. Don't wait till the last minute to know what you want to do after high school because you're too late. You probably should have already took your SAT by then. You probably should have already took your ASVAB by then. Not saying everybody has to go to college. Not saying everybody has to go to the military. You can even go to the workforce. Like, you can go ahead and start working at, like, a small company go ahead and have in mind when you walk into high school what you want to do after high school because literally your four years go by super duper fast like you walk in as a freshman and you leave in as a high school graduate Just take those serious and keep those in mind because it's really 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 important like this is like the most important tip out of any of the tips that i have given you guys because it has something to deal with after your life after high school after high school, you're not a baby anymore. You're grown, basically. You gotta be about your business. So it's best for you to go ahead and start doing it now. Right when you walk out high school, even if you're a freshman, go ahead and start thinking about what you wanna do. Go ahead and sign up for the PSAT. 
Go ahead and get you an SAT book, ACT book. Go ahead and start studying. Take it seriously. This tip is really for the freshmen. So this is my very last tip. I really enjoyed making this video, but I'm about out of tips. Like I'm about out of stuff to give to you guys. And if you guys need more information or advice or anything, then you can just DM me on Instagram or you can comment down below for more questions that you guys have. But this is my last tip and this goes out for the freshmen. So before you start high school, I know it's gonna be scary. I know it's gonna be hard to just make a huge transition and just start doing things on your own. It, really your four years are like literally the best four years of your life. At times I thought that this was not literally the best four years of my life. Now that I'm like finna be on my own in a few weeks, I'm literally like, dang, I kinda do miss high school a little bit. And I just got out of high school, like real life really starts to hit you right after you walk out of high school. So just take advantage of it. Go to your orientation, be to class on time, stay on top of your GPA, do what you gotta do. So enjoy your four years, like it flies by literally. Take it serious and also have fun. Enjoy it, like that day when graduation comes, you're gonna be like, dang, time went by really, really fast. Okay guys, see I've come to the end of this video. I know I talked a lot in this video, but I just wanna give you some real good advice based on my experience of high school to now. I'm about to enter college and start college in a few weeks. Just had to give you guys some advice because not a lot of people out here would just be honest with you and just let you know the real deal on high school. High school is not like high school musical. It's not like the movies. It's not like no TV show. Like it's real life. Yeah, if you guys really enjoyed this video, then please give me a big thumbs up and comment down below what year you graduate or if you already graduated, comment your year. Class of 2019 over here. Don't forget to share this video with your friend. If you feel like you need someone to hear this video or just to watch this video, share it with them. If you stayed all the way to the end of this video and you have not subscribed already, then please be sure you are subscribed to my channel. And while you're at it, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post more videos. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys show me. And thank you most importantly for watching this video. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.